All right, folks, it is time to discuss the trailer for Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall's final ever entry into the Doctor Who universe. I know it's a few days old now, but I've got some stuff to say, some concerns, some things I'm looking forward to, so let's just jump right into it. Hello, Doctor. Welcome to the end of your existence. A dozen of the world's leading seismologists have gone missing. 15 of the world's most valuable paintings. I'm going to say a couple of things right here. Immediately, we know the Master is coming back, we know that Kate is coming back, and we know that some seismologists are missing. All right, let's talk about the Master. It makes sense that he's returning. I mean, if we just kind of left him where he was before, that wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world, but it makes sense that he's going to get a final appearance inside of Chris Chibnall's era of Doctor Who. Kate Stewart returning feels a little odd to me because, I mean, we all saw Flux and she barely did anything in there. I don't know if it has anything to do with the structure of the season, how it was originally planned, how it had to be executed due to COVID and all that kind of stuff. I don't know how much got shifted around to the point where she is coming back in this one or if Chris Chibnall is just like, yeah, we're bringing Kate back. I don't know exactly what her purpose is. I hope that she does have one because otherwise it'll be just like Flux where there was really no reason for her to be there. 15 of the world's most valuable paintings have disappeared. Okay, Ace is back. We knew she was coming back. We actually see her here. Now, I actually haven't seen very many episodes with Ace. I have been slowly working my way through the classic era of Doctor Who and greatly enjoying it, but I haven't seen more than probably two stories with her. And even then, I watched those a long time ago, so I don't have quite the attachment to Ace that a lot of people do. I'm probably going to watch at least one more episode with her before this comes out, just so that I have a little bit more of an understanding of her character than I already do. But I haven't gotten to that point in the show yet, and I'm probably not going to for a while. So while I don't have the same attachment that other people do, I am certainly looking forward to seeing her, although it is another thing that the episode has to deal with. Can I let you in on a little secret? A giant incursion on Earth is... All right, so here we see the Daleks are back, and I gotta be honest, I am definitely at the point in Doctor Who where if I never saw a Dalek for the next decade, I would be perfectly fine with that, and we've already gotten three Dalek stories inside of this era, so having them come back for Jodie Whittaker's final appearance... To me, I'd really rather not see it. I'd honestly rather just focus on one villain. It's her big regeneration story. There are a lot of things to do. We have to say goodbye to this doctor. We are probably saying goodbye to her companions as well. And we have to round out this era and probably answer some questions in a somewhat satisfying way. I don't know why we're adding Daleks into the mix when we only have 90 minutes to deal with all of this stuff. It makes me a little bit concerned, but I am interested to see how they attempt to balance all of these things, and I certainly hope that they pull it off. Has it never occurred to you that it could be a trap? This isn't a day you are erased. I will add here as well, just from this first 30 seconds of the trailer, we are seeing a large amount of visual effects. They're definitely selling the spectacle and the visual effects angle with this trailer they want you to see. This is a big episode with lots of effects and lots of villains and lots of locations. And they are selling that if that's what they want to sell. I certainly hope the episode has more than that because coming off the back of something like Flux, where there was a lot of effects that sure mostly did look pretty good, but the meat of the story wasn't really there in a lot of places. I can't help but be concerned about this, especially since it is her final ever episode in this era. It is closing a chapter. These past three seasons come to a conclusion in The Power of the Doctor, so I'm hoping that it leans more towards the character stuff and less towards the big spectacle, visual effects heavy, not focusing on story angle that we got a lot of in Flux. I'm a little bit nervous 
but I am hoping that they manage to pull it off. I'll also add that Vinder is back as well. I can't help but ask myself, why is Vinder back? I know there were a lot of theories and discussions during Flux that there was going to be a certain revelation about the timeless child and whose timeless child that was. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. That makes me a little bit nervous because if he's coming back, you'd think he probably is here for a reason, but also he might not be. It might just be a Kate Stewart thing where he's just around for no reason. So we'll see what direction that takes. I am very curious to see how that ends up playing into the episode or if he's just another character thrown into the mix without much to do. I don't know. Again, I'm hopeful, but I am very nervous. This isn't a day you are erased forever. Bit of a conversation stopper. I'll also say we are seeing a decent amount of the master in here. I'm really, really hoping that he is the primary villain for this one. I hope the Daleks are not in it that much at all. I hope he is the focus in terms of a villain because I do legitimately enjoy his presence. I think he's a fun character and I don't think you need all of these different villains in here. I just hope that they manage to at least focus on him because I've enjoyed what we've gotten of him in the previous stories he's been in and closing out this era and maybe having a way to close out this incarnation of the master, possibly. I don't know, that could be an interesting thing to see. I just don't want him to be sharing too much space alongside the other villains. And here we see the confirmation as well of the Cybermen returning and Ashad. And once again, can't help but be nervous because though I enjoyed Ashad's presence, seeing the Cybermen and the Daleks and the Master are all in the same story, that is a lot for something to try to balance. And seeing the direction that this era of the show has taken, where the first season there are absolutely zero returning monsters or villains, to the final episode, where the three most popular ones are just thrown in it together, it's clearly taken a very specific evolution, and... I get nervous seeing all of these things because, for one thing, I don't think we need to see these monsters all the time. I just think we need to catch them every once in a while and get a good story with them. But having them all thrown in the mix, man, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it makes me very nervous. It's incredibly dangerous. And we also get the confirmation that Tegan is back, which of course we already knew. I've enjoyed Tegan. I've seen much more of her than I have of Ace because I've caught in a fair bit of the Fifth Doctor's era, though I haven't quite reached it in my current watch through of the show. And I enjoy that character. And it's been so long since she has been on the screen, must be about four decades. So it's certainly exciting to see her back on the show. And with both of these companions, I certainly hope that they have a good way of addressing why they're back and what they have been up to and really incorporating them into the story in a way that feels important, not in a way that's just like, oh, hi, 30-second cameo or two-minute cameo and we're done. I really hope they have value and a purpose and a memorable presence within this story for both of these characters, even though I'm more familiar with Tegan than I am with Ace. So again, this is another thing that a regeneration episode has to deal with, but I'm just very hopeful and nervous and just praying that they can manage to make it all work. It was a really bad idea. Anything could happen. I don't want it to end. Yes! All right, that's it. That's the whole trailer for her final ever episode. I've gotten a lot of my thoughts out of the way already, but it's basically something that I am looking forward to quite a bit and also incredibly nervous. I have enjoyed Jodie Whittaker's era of this show more than a lot of people. I think her first season is good. Her second season is good as well. And they are both mixed in their own ways and have different things that work better, but I like them both. I want to be very clear about that. I enjoy her first two seasons. Flux, on the other hand, has about 50% stuff that works. Well, maybe 60%. 
and a lot of stuff that doesn't. It really falls apart in the final two episodes, and I just hope that they can manage to pull together a strong ending, because in terms of Chibnall and endings, you look at the previous seasons, you have the Series 11 finale, the Series 12 finale, and the Flux finale, and of those, I don't know which one is strongest, but although there are aspects to the Series 11 and Series 12 finales that I enjoy, they are certainly a mixed bag, particularly the Series 12 finale, which I enjoyed a lot when I first watched it, and the more I've thought about it, the more I've reassessed it, and though I enjoy some things, it feels like it doesn't fully pull together for what a finale needs to do, and the Flux finale is just straight up not good. It just does not land whatsoever. So this is, though not a finale of a season, the finale of her era. And I'm very concerned because I haven't seen Chip Null prove to me personally that he can pull off a finale in a really strong way. Again, I liked the Series 12 finale a lot when it aired, but it's something that I've come to enjoy less over time. So I'm really hoping that he can manage to somehow take all these things, the Master, the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Doctor's finale, her regeneration, her goodbye, the goodbyes to probably Dan and Yaz, possibly wrapping up the Master, though not necessarily, bringing back Tegan and Ace and addressing why they're back, what they've been up to, and incorporating them into the story in a reasonable way. Just communicating a story to us, the audience, in 90 minutes in a way that does not feel incredibly chaotic and incredibly unfocused. I have a lot of worry about how well this is going to be pulled off. I think there's a lot of cause for worry. I don't know that it's going to. If I'm going to be honest, I'm leaning towards they won't pull it off, but I really hope they do because there's nothing I'd like to see more than a great end to an era that overall I enjoy. I mean, this is an era that, though far from the best of the show, is in my eyes good, and I certainly enjoyed the ride from start to finish, well, in some places more than others, but I enjoyed the ride. So I really want them to end strong, and I hope they manage to, but I gotta be honest, sitting here and looking at this 50 second trailer, I see some things that are intriguing, some things that I hope they land well, but a lot to concern me as a viewer. But those are my thoughts on this trailer. What did you think about this one? I hope you are more hopeful than me, though I certainly am hopeful, just I'm probably a lot more nervous. Be sure to leave your thoughts down below if you feel like doing so. And also, there is going to be a Horror of Thing Rock review out sooner than you can even imagine. It is going to be very soon. I can't give a date because, as you know, I cannot do that, but I am practically done editing. It is literally going to be out so soon, so I hope to see you around for that or another future video, but if not, that is just fine, so long as you know that I appreciate your time here today, and with that said, thank you very much for watching, take care, and have a lovely week.